All right, we're taking a look at yet another new product. This one's from Gigabyte, specifically their Aorus team. It's the Aorus AD27QD. That's correct. So consider this sort of a first look video. No, actually it's it's like a second look video because technically the first time I checked this monitor out was at CES in January, which was like a month ago. Man, time's flying. And I, I was really impressed by it. My first impressions were super positive and I was like, send me one. I want to take a closer look at it. So this, this video is not sponsored. I can talk all the crap I want on this thing. I, I'm not getting paid a cent. They just sent me a unit and I'm giving you my first impressions, second impressions, whatever. So on the surface, this is sort of your typical high-end gaming panel at 599 US it's got all those high-end specs you're probably familiar with, like, uh, well, 27-inch, 2560 by 1440, IPS, 144 hertz, one millisecond response time, HDR and FreeSync supported, and yada, yada, yada. There's nothing inherently unique about any of those specs, as robust and impressive as they are. There's a bunch of other offerings at this price or even lower with all the same specs. What really sets this monitor apart from the rest is, surprisingly, it's OSD and all the various features that are crammed inside of it. So we're gonna be taking a closer look at that and I'll tell you why exactly it's special. But for now, let's talk about the panel itself. Apart from supporting HDR, you also get a 95% DCI P3 color gamut, which is quite a bit wider than sRGB or Adobe RGB. So wider range of colors, that's, that's always good. The panel advertises a 10-bit color depth when in reality, it's actually an 8-bit panel using FRC, which is a form of dithering. So it kind of switches between two colors really quickly to trick your eyes into seeing a third color that's not really there, giving the illusion of a wider color gamut. It's not quite as good as a native 10-bit panel by any stretch. However, it does have a small leg up over a standard 8-bit panel. That being said, if you're just gaming on this thing or you're doing some light content creation, like you have a YouTube channel or something, the color on this panel is more than adequate. I mean, the, the colors are really rich and vibrant. Everything kind of pops. Uh, without being oversaturated. However, if you're looking to do more professional work and serious hardcore color grading, I would probably upgrade to a native 10 bit panel at the very least. The screen itself is pretty matte. It's uh, relatively anti-glare, which is great, especially if you're uh, gaming during the day and you've got like a window behind you or something like that. Uh, the bezels are super thin on three sides. You've also got a nice looking chin with some light Aorus branding and a power LED at the bottom, uh, which is white. Tucked away beneath that is a joystick for navigating the built-in OSD, which as we'll see in a moment is almost completely useless. Behind the panel, you'll see a bunch of RGB lighting that's on the display itself, as well as the very nice stand. I don't know how I feel about this. It looks really good, but it's also behind the monitor. Why can't we have more RGB on the front of the panel? I mean, obviously that could be really distracting, but just give us the option to turn it off. I just, I don't know how important it is to have RGB lighting in a place where you can't see it while you're gaming on the display. I don't know, you guys let me know what you think about that because it looks really nice. You can customize it within the OSD and things like that, but it's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. I feel like some of it uh, is wasted on, on my eyes. The monitor stand gives you the full range of adjustments, tilt, hand swivel and rotate up to 90 degrees. It's also built like a tank. The actual base is completely metal. You could probably kill someone with it. And the actual spine, while it's plastic for the most part, is still very durable as well. There's even a nice big carrying handle at the top that seems very rugged and built to last. If you're keen on wall mounting, you can remove the panel from the stand with a couple quick release latches. And underneath there, you'll find some VESA mounts. There's a nice collection of ports back here, including three USB 3.0, two of which are downstream and one is upstream. That upstream will have to be connected to your PC in order to take advantage of a lot of the features that are in the OSD, which we'll take a look at momentarily. You've got a single DisplayPort 1.4 port, which is the port you're gonna have to use if you wanna take advantage of FreeSync with a GeForce 10 series card or newer, as it's not gonna translate over HDMI 2.0 like it will with an AMD card. You've also got a pair of HDMI 2.0 ports, mic and headphone jacks, a Kensington lock, and an AC power plug with an internal power brick so you don't have to deal or fuss around with an external power brick. So I think from a hardware perspective, uh, the Aorus team has definitely put together a high quality and attractive monitor that's definitely on par in terms of the looks and feels department with other panels in its price range and even some that are a bit more expensive than it. But that's just the hardware side. Let's talk about software with that OSD. Now, remember before when I said that the uh, little joystick here with the built-in OSD was virtually useless? That's because available for download with this panel is the OSD Sidekick application. It's basically just a piece of software that runs on 
your Windows desktop, functions like a regular program, but it allows you to control every single feature that this panel offers with a keyboard and mouse. This is kind of the equivalent, or at least it brings me back to when motherboard manufacturers started going with their full keyboard and mouse supported UEFIs, uh, when before we just kind of had a more basic BIOS and just what a, what a game changer that was. I'm getting the same sort of feeling here and I wouldn't be surprised if other monitor manufacturers uh, some point down the line started uh, following this trend. And I hope they do because it's a lot easier obviously to uh, navigate with a keyboard and mouse than it is with any sort of uh, you know hardware buttons on the monitor. That's just tip of the iceberg though. Let's talk about some of the actual features. Uh, I don't know where to start so I'm just gonna start with uh, the black equalizer. The black equalizer basically lifts up the black levels in a dark scene. So if you happen to be playing a, a game with dark scenes, for example, the latest Resident Evil 2 remake, and you're scared of the dark perhaps, or you wanna be able to see those zombies from a bit further away down a dark corridor, you can up your black equalizer and things in the dark will be much easier to see. There's also an aim stabilizer setting that effectively reduces ghosting and creates a more perceptibly smooth image. And the way they do that is kind of like ultra low motion blur, uh, where they sort of flicker the screen in between frames. I haven't used any technology like this extensively. I would think for me personally, it would start to fatigue my eyes more quickly, but I guess I can't say for sure. It also effectively dims the, the, the overall brightness of the screen. So you might have to up the brightness uh, within the OSD to sort of compensate for that. Within OSD Sidekick are also a number of game assist features, the first of which is basically cheating. It's, it's a crosshair overlay. So you could be no scope and noobs, you know, with an op in CSGO, and there's no way for a developer to prevent it because it's all within the monitor's hardware. Um, it, it's, it's basically cheating. I'm still a terrible gamer with it, but I'm sure some people will be able to exploit it a lot more effectively than I will. They've taken it even further with letting you customize your own crosshair. So if you wanted to pixel out your ex-girlfriend's face or something like that, that's something you can do. It's 2019, screw it. There's also a timer and a counter that you can throw up on the screen. They're both very basic tools, but also incredibly useful. For example, if you want to monitor your ability cooldowns, you can throw up a timer. You, know, you can customize exactly if you want it to time up or count down. A counter can be really useful for streaming. Let's say, I mean, I've done this in the past where I'm like, all right, for every $100 donated to charity, I'll take a, a shot on stream. And in the past, I've used like a third party software to actually count the number of shots I've taken for my viewers to see. But this is all just sort of an integrated solution that makes things that much more simple. You can also enable display alignment, which I'm still not 100% sure what this is for. My guess would be if you have multiple monitors that you're putting side by side or even, uh, you know, top to bottom that you can align them more accurately or precisely. But again, I, I have no idea. And then you've also got picture in picture, picture by picture with a couple uh, different settings there. Dashboard, you have a dashboard that's kind of similar to MSI Afterburners OSD, where it can give you a bunch of different system diagnostics like your GPU, CPU temperatures, frequencies, your frame rate. Although the FPS counter was either spitting out the incorrect values, they were like, extremely high or it wasn't working at all. So hopefully they'll fix that in a future patch. And it's worth noting, you can move this in any corner of the screen along with the counter and the timer and things like that. Naturally, these are all hot keyable functions as well. So there's a hot key tab that lets you pretty much bind almost any function that the sidekick features. The last feature here is ANC or active noise canceling, which uh, Gigabyte actually demoed for me at their suite. I got to try it out firsthand and it worked really well. I was very impressed actually. The way the demo worked was they had two systems I was gaming on one and they had a rep gaming on the other who was supposed to represent sort of your typical scumbag gamer in a public server. He was mashing his keyboard really loudly with Cherry MX blue switches. He was blaring music on his speakers while talking into his headset mic. And with ANC enabled on his system, I could only hear his voice, which was pretty crystal clear from what I could tell. I mean, it was fairly noisy in the suite, but I could hear him exactly what he was saying without any of the ambient noise. Couldn't hear the speakers, couldn't hear the keyboard. I was very impressed and I was using a pair of really crappy earbuds as well. And bear in mind, this is all being processed by the monitor. So you're not wasting any system resources. There's zero overhead here. And overall, it just seems like a really useful feature. I could definitely see this being a nice value add for streamers who want to give their viewers the best possible experience. So they don't want any ambient noise coming through their stream. Definitely a nice built-in feature to have. And the app also lets you choose how aggressive you want the ANC effect to be while letting you select how close or far away the microphone is from your mouth in order to give you the best possible performance. I really like the approach that Oris has taken with the OSD on this display, especially it being their first display, like 
good job. You, you guys knocked it out of the park. That being said, it's still a very early product. It's very new and the firmware updates aren't quite there yet. So there are some issues. Now I already mentioned the frame rate counter wasn't really working. That's kind of a minor issue compared to all of the hotkey problems I've been having. So depending on the game that I'm in, the hotkeys are either limited or they just flat out don't work at all. And like I mentioned before, a lot of the features in the OSD are reliant on being bindable and being able to pull them up at a moment's notice. There's no point in alt tabbing out of your game just to enable a setting and then alt tabbing back in, no one's gonna do that. So hopefully with a future update, I know Gigabyte said that they're currently working on a new firmware that's supposed to address all these issues. Uh, that'll all be fixed. And at that point, I can give my confident recommendation of this panel. So given its price and its fairly unique feature set, I would say that this monitor doesn't exactly target your everyday typical gamer, but rather a niche type of gamer that you know wants a timer and they want a counter and they want the active noise canceling built in. There's a specific type of gamer who has been waiting for this monitor for a long time. And I think for those users, the premium here is going to be well worth it in the long run, assuming that all the various bugs that I just mentioned get ironed out soon. So that's it guys. Let me know what you think about this thing down in the comments. And also which of its various features do you, do you see yourself utilizing the most? I'm actually kind of curious what you guys have to say about that. Feel free to toss a like on the video before you go. It helps me a lot and get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Have a good one guys. I will see you all in the next video.